Hi everybody, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your end of the week analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading week ending Friday 18th of October. For the very short term, I expect a little bit of downward movement to continue. I've got two targets still, 2968 or 2947, and after that, I'm expecting the upward trend to resume and I'm expecting a new all-time high for the S&P sooner rather than later. It might come next week. If we see a new low below 2822.12, then I would have confidence in an alternate, but until that has happened, I have very, very little confidence in that wave count. It's presented only for those of you who have your own personal, very bearish technical analysis who wish to use a bearish Elliott wave count. This week, there's another new all-time high from the AD line. I give that a lot of weight. It's an extremely bullish signal. I expect price will follow to new all-time highs sooner rather than later. This is the main Elliott wave count. It sees the bull market beginning in March 2009. It's the simplest Elliott wave structure, a five-wave impulse. One is off to the left of the chart. It's the last weekly candlestick in November 2014. Two is here. Three is here, and it's shorter than one. Here is four, and this is where five begins. Five needs to complete as a five-wave structure at primary degree, and so far I expect we only have primary one and two complete, and primary three unfolding, showing its subdivisions at higher time frames, which is absolutely normal for the S&P. The S&P most often has third waves which are extended. I'm not expecting this one to be extended in price, but it may well be extended in time, and so its corrections are showing up at higher time frames. That looks quite normal. When three is over, then four should unfold, and should remain above wave one price territory. When four is done, five should unfold. And so the whole structure for this fifth wave at cycle degree, which began back down here, still has many months to continue before the structure could be complete. Because cycle wave three is shorter than cycle wave one, and because a core Elliott wave rule states a third wave may never be the shortest, of 1, 3 and 5. That means that the fifth wave has a limit of no longer than equality in length with 3. Within the fifth wave, within primary 3, no second wave correction may move beyond its start below this invalidation point. When we place cycle waves 1, 2, 3 and 4 in those positions, we can then draw an Elliott channel around this impulse. The first trend line is drawn from the end of 1 to 3 and then a parallel copy is placed on the end of 2. When we do that it perfectly shows where 4 perfectly found support and there's an overthrow for the middle of the third wave, the third wave of the third wave, the strongest portion of the movement. This looks absolutely textbook perfect and gives me reasonable confidence that 1, 2, 3 and 4 are placed in the right positions, which gives me confidence on that limit. Let's take a look at this wave count at the daily chart level where 5 begins here. This, well, sorry, that's going to be off to the left of the chart. Let's go back. We're going to look at the daily chart from this low here, where primary 2 ends and primary 3 begins. Primary 3, the target is only for it to reach equality in length with primary wave 1 because that fits with the higher limit for cycle 5. The target for intermediate 3 likewise is only for it to reach equality in length with intermediate 1 because again that fits with the higher target for primary 3. Although these third waves are expected to only reach equality in length with their first waves, they are expected to be extended in terms of time, showing their subdivisions at higher time frames. That's really normal behaviour for this market for its third waves. And so within primary three, intermediate waves one and two should be complete. Intermediate three begins here. So far within it, minor waves one and two should be complete. But if minor 2 were to continue lower as a double zigzag, which it could still do, it may not move beyond the start of 
minor 1 below the short term invalidation point. Within minor 3, minute 1 may be over here, minute 2 may continue a little bit lower to begin next week, and then when that's done, a third wave at 1, 2, 3, 4 degrees should begin. The next upward movement should finally have the power to break above resistance and make a new all-time high for the S&P. At the hourly chart level, here's the end of minor 2 and the start of minor 3. A nice impulse for minute wave 1 here. An expanded flat continuing for minute 2, subdividing 3, 3, 5. With minuet C, an ending expanding diagonal possibly. And the first and preferred target for minute 2 would be about the 0.236 Fibonacci ratio of minute 1. If downward movement falls through the first target, then the next target would be the 0.382 Fibonacci ratio. When minute 2 is complete, and it should be done in another day or so, then a third wave at 4 degrees upward should begin and should exhibit a strong increase in upward momentum. Minute 2 may not move beyond the start of minute 1, below the invalidation point. For the very short term, if there is a new low below 2822.12, then this would be the alternate wave count that I would use. And while well price remains above 2822.12, I do not have confidence in this wave count. It's presented really only to illustrate that there is a more bearish alternate currently. And for those members whose own personal technical analysis may prefer a bearish outlook, you may want to have a pathway to follow using an Elliott wave count for that. But I do not have confidence in this wave count considering my own technical analysis. This wave count is identical to this up to this point here. And now I'm looking at the other structural possibility for this final fifth wave at cycle degree. My first weekly chart considers it's going to be a more likely and more common impulse. The second chart continues the less likely or less common ending diagonal. And for this one, in order for it to end at or before the limit, it would have to be an ending contracting diagonal. And those are the most common type. An Elliott wave in a bull market, Elliott wave ending diagonal is equivalent to a rising wedge in classic analysis terms. This fifth wave ending diagonal beginning here must see all of its subwaves subdivide as zigzags and the second and fourth waves of ending diagonals or of all diagonals are commonly very deep. Commonly they end within a range of 0.66 to 0.81 the prior wave that gives us this calculated target range for downward movement for primary two. And within that range sits the lower edge of this extremely important trend channel, which I'm drawing on all of my monthly, weekly and daily charts. It's really important to draw this channel correctly. Draw it on a semi-log scale. Draw the first trend line from the last candlestick in November 2014 to this candlestick up here. And then place a parallel copy down on this candlestick down here. If we do see an unexpected deeper pullback, look out for extremely strong support at this trend line. Just like this deep pullback bounced up strongly off the trend line here, any future deep pullbacks while the bull market continues will be expected to bounce up off this trend line. Technically, within the diagonal, primary 2 may not move beyond the start of primary 1, below this invalidation point. When primary 2 is complete, then primary 3 for a diagonal must subdivide as a zigzag and must move beyond the end of 1. When that's done, primary 4 must subdivide as a zigzag, must overlap back into wave 1 price territory and may not move beyond the end of 2. And lastly, at the weekly chart level, this wave count is the same as the first weekly chart, except I've moved the degree of labelling of the entire bull market all down one degree. 
while my first weekly chart expects that when the fifth wave is complete, a massive trend change, a once in multi-generations event may occur, and a new, absolutely devastating bear market to last decades may begin, this wave count is much more bullish for the longer term. It expects that when the final fifth wave is complete, a trend change should occur and a bear market should begin, but it may be relatively brief and shallow, may not correct to much more than 20% of market value and could be over within a year or so. And then when that's done, another bull market should begin, which should have stronger underlying technical support as it would then be expected to be a third wave. The difference in these two wave counts is best viewed on monthly charts and I link to those monthly charts at the beginning of every day's analysis and every week's analysis for Lara's weekly members. If you haven't already viewed those charts, I strongly, cons ex sorry, strongly suggest that you do so. The difference is quite big and quite important, but the difference is not here yet. The structure of the fifth wave still needs to complete and it's still going to take many months yet maybe even over a year for it to finally complete with all of the corrections along the way. At the weekly chart level this week there is a slight decline in volume. It's really slight but it is a decline. However, in current market conditions volume has been rising for actually years now on light and declining volume sorry price has been rising for years on light and declining volume and so at this stage as this bear market is now quite sorry bull market is now quite aged any further rises in price coming on declining volume in current market and conditions is not of a concern and so I'm not too concerned about this. Price could certainly continue to rise, even with declining volume. It's done so for a long time. This week, a smaller range week indicates just a little bit of weakness here as price is finding a bit of a struggle here at strong resistance, about 3020 to 3025, the prior all-time high. A slightly longer upper wick is slightly bearish for the very short term. Look out for support just below about 2940. On balance volume is range bound, a break above resistance would be a bullish signal, a break below support would be a bearish signal, we haven't had that yet. RSI is in neutral territory, there's plenty of room for price to rise or fall. ADX is below 15, it's too low to indicate a trend at this stage and MACD is overall bearish but not fully so. The shorter term picture sees some a resistance line along here a support line along here. This may be a really big triangle pattern, but it doesn't really have very good converging trend lines for a triangle, so I'm possibly not going to consider it as such. For the short term though, for Friday session, a bit of a long lower wick is a little bit bullish, but volume pushing price lower during Friday session for the very near term is bearish and suggests the risk of a near-term pullback at this time is elevated. Looks like price is finding resistance difficult to overcome about 3,000 and hasn't been able to overcome that in its first attempt at the end of the week. ADX is declining at this time frame. There's no clear trend at this stage. And on balance volume is at support. This may halt a fallen price. And this support line doesn't have strong technical significance though. It's only been tested two times, was broken and so weakened, and now again only tested two times. And so a break below here would be a rather weak bearish signal. RSI is well in neutral territory. There is plenty of room for price to rise or fall. MACD is bullish and fully so. Stochastics is overbought, but when this market has a trend, particularly a bullish trend, stochastics can remain overbought for extended periods of time. And so on its own, this does not mean we have to have a deeper pullback or a trend change at this time. At the end of the week, we have another new all-time high from the AD line. I give this indicator a lot of weight. I give it so much weight because of Lowry's history with um, and Lowry's data. In then over 90 year history, 
every bear market bar two examples has been preceded by a minimum of four to six months or a minimum of four months of bearish divergence between price and the AD line. At this stage, there is no divergence between price and the AD line, or no bearish divergence anyway. There's actually the opposite, bullish divergence. And so with no bearish divergence, the probability of a bear market developing here is extremely low. There is also a positive correlation between the duration of a bear market, or sorry, the severity of a bear market, and the duration of bearish divergence with breadth that preceded it. A longer divergence with breadth is correlated with a more severe bear market. A short divergence with breadth, or no divergence in two examples only in Lowry's history, is correlated with a less severe bear market. With zero divergence at this time, it is unlikely, highly unlikely, a bear market may be about to begin, and if it does, it would be much more likely to be relatively shallow and brief, rather than severe. Also, in Lowry's history, breadth most often precedes price. With bullish divergence at this time between breadth and price, the probability is very high that price will follow breadth and make new all-time highs sooner rather than later. This is an extremely bullish signal and I am giving it a lot of weight. It offers a lot of support to the first Elliott Wave count and this is the biggest reason why I do not have confidence in their alternate Elliott Wave count. At the daily chart level there is single day bullish divergence between price and breadth for Friday session. Friday price moved obviously lower, a lower, lower, lower high and the candlestick was red. However breadth was flat to possibly ever so slightly increasing. This divergence is bullish suggesting that any further pullbacks early next week might be more brief and shallow. At the weekly chart level this week price has moved higher, inverted VIX has moved higher, neither have yet made short term highs, there is no short term divergence, there is still longer term bearish divergence developing between price and inverted VIX, it has not proven particularly useful in timing, this may be part of the process of a topping process that could continue for another year or two as this bull market finally comes to an end. At the short term picture between price and inverted VIX there is no divergence for Friday to confirm that divergence for the AD line in price and so if we do see a pullback or downturn early next week I'll expect it to be more brief and shallow than otherwise. That's all from me this week with your S&P analysis. I hope all of our members are having a most awesome weekend.